Neighborhood with Rance Adams. This is River City Live. Today we are joined by Dr. Doc Rush from the Mayo Clinic. She is a psychologist and she's also a mother with two kids. So today the topic is how as parents and caregivers should we be coping with social distancing? It's been a month right now and I'll, I'll say as a parent, the walls keep getting closer and closer and there's a lot of stresses. So what are some tips that we could do really to help out and be a role model for our kids? Well, I think that the key phrase here, Mark, is role model. Um, obviously, what we show our kids is what they're going to take away and what they're going to learn from this situation. And as you know, as a parent, every situation is a learning opportunity. So I think we have to uh, do our best to stick with a schedule because schedules provide some level of comfort, some level of security, and they help with this idea of constancy, something that's going to stay the same despite the fact that everything else in the world is not the same as usual. So getting up at the same time every day, sticking to rhythms for when we take showers, when we eat breakfast, when we start homework, when we take breaks, I think those things are really important. And building in all of the different aspects of the home life that we need to have, like exercise, building in um, socializing, if we have spiritual activities that we're used to doing, connecting with church or synagogues or mosques as we need to, I think those are really important things to stick to. Absolutely. Um, and that's one of the things that I feel like it's working on our side. There are so many things right now we cannot control. However, there are some things that you can. And I feel like embracing the things you can control, having that structure, it just kind of keeps everybody almost I guess operating at an okay level. But one of the questions I have for you is, how should we be talking to our kids about this? Because it's a very scary time. There's a ton of information out there. Some of it accurate, some of it not accurate. And the other part of it is, people are really predicting what will happen because no one knows. It's very uncertain. Right. I think uncertainty is generally a topic that's hard to talk about in general. So it's particularly hard. If you're feeling uncomfortable talking about it with your kids, that's completely normal. I'm uncomfortable talking about it with my kids. But I use it as an opportunity to talk with them about what do they have in their toolbox to manage on certain times. So we use it as a chance to talk about you know, if you're feeling anxious, should I be taking a break? Should I be journaling? Should I be writing down my thoughts? If I'm feeling sad about missing an activity at school or a graduation or an opportunity to connect with friends, what tools do I have to address that? Can I do a video chat? Um, can I call somebody on the phone? Can I write them a letter? Can I do things differently? I think being flexible and modeling that flexibility to our children is really important. And how we talk to our kids, we need to validate their feelings. We need to spend some time saying, listen, buddy, I know you're sad. I know you're not getting to go to that basketball game or you're not getting to see so-and-so in person. Um, you'll see them again. We'll make it happen. We may have to do things differently, but we're in this together and we're going to get through it together and what provide that reassurance. One of the things I was so surprised with, with my kids here, and I'm sure a lot of parents can relate, is my, my kids, they, they're, they like school, but they don't like enjoy it every Monday ready to go. They actually <laughs> really miss school right now. They miss yeah. social connection with their peers. They miss their teachers. They also miss all the athletic programs that were canceled. So it is a, a really tough time for them. And I like what you're saying. It's okay you know, have them talk to you about it. It's okay to be sad and really let them kind of like vent out their feelings. What do you recommend though for parents right now? Because with parents, yeah. so many different types of stresses that's happening right now. And I feel like every day there's something else new that hits us where we feel just a little bit overwhelmed. Yeah, I think that you have to model exactly what you're telling your children. You have to vent your, your feelings. Um, for some people that's talking, um, for some people that's writing, for some people that's working out, <laughs> for some people that's eating, okay? Um, <laughs> you have to do something um, to make sure that the um, various feelings that you have in your mind are addressed, that you're not bottling these up. Because if you bottle up heavy emotion, you're going to feel it physically. You're going to get headaches, stomach aches. You're going to not be able to sleep. We don't want you to have that kind of thing. So you have to learn strategies to own your own feelings and take responsibility, look inside yourself, see what tools you have to be able to weather the storm. 
And some of us go went into this whole pandemic with a whole list of coping strategies. And some of us, well, we've never been good copers, okay? Um, but now's the time to kind of dig deep and look for things that can help us build some resilience because we don't know how long this is going to last. And there are impacts. There are impacts financially and economically and socially and spiritually. And, and we have to just live the best we can. And that's a tough one. It really is. My last question for you really has to deal with, not just as a parent, but even as a, a child, what should we be looking out for on the mental health side of something that it's time now to see uh, an expert on psychology? Yeah, I think on one level, we have the people who um, get very anxious. Um, and anxiety can come as the usual worry, nervousness, withdrawal, inactivity, unability to engage or procrastination. But it can also result for some people in anger because anxiety is an emotion that is something that comes out of threat. When we feel a threat, we get anxiety. And there are realistic threats to our life right now, for some of us more than others. So I think being able to uh, manage that uh, means being able to kind of dissect what's going on. If somebody gets to the point where they really can't and you see uh, your child or your spouse withdrawing, then it might be time to get them some help. Or if you see them lashing out in anger more frequently, then it may be time for them to contact a health provider, or a health professional. People can still do video visits and things like that. Yeah, well, thank you so much for all of your time and your information. I'll tell you right now, you know, again, this is what everybody needs is really to look into themselves, how they are working with their families and the mental side of it can be very daunting. So we really appreciate your time. To learn more, you go to mayoclinic.org. Thanks for having me. Don't pay.